Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my show Computer Wednesday. In today's episode, we're going to take a closer look at Hawaii P30 Pro, specifically the camera aspect of it. So let's dive right into it. Now this is a camera monster. Now you have to understand it has like primary four cameras and you have to understand three of them are accessible to user and one of them is time of flight camera. Now if you keep hearing this word time of flight camera, time of flight camera and you are not familiar with what the heck it is, I have provided a link down below that will explain what the heck it is. So you have to understand it has a 20 megapixel uh, 16 millimeter as in very wide and it has a 40 millimeter primary as in 27 like you know medium range and it has 8 megapixel uh, f uh, 3.4 basically kind of uh, not bright enough but 125 millimeter periscope camera basically that 125 i think is the uh, lowest it can go so basically optically it has three steps and in the last step as in the 8 megapixel the small one it has a periscope camera now you can check my full detail about optical zoom in mobile phone i was theorizing like uh, oppo will bring out the new generation because oppo is also doing exactly this thing they also have three cameras and one of them have periscope so periscope allow them to have optical zoom so understand this this 125 is not that where it starts it starts at roughly around uh, 5x below it and it allows you to do optical zoom so basically you are zooming in now once you exceed the capacity of this it switches camera then you like you still want to zoom out it then it switches to 20 megapixel this one so you can understand there's a lot of camera and this one camera time of flight camera is solely dedicated for object detection so this is how this camera will detect you and uh, basically found out your border because it can physically detect what things are and how far it is so it gives a very accurate representation of border so basically it knows this is not me this is not me so it will only mask me out so that's how it will give you that shallow depth of field so kind of amazing technology so you have to understand, is this the best smartphone camera out there? Now, if I have to describe this camera phone for you in one word, the word would be versatile. Now be mindful because it has so many sensors and you can understand the lowest one goes up to 8 megapixel. The output from this camera is only limited to 10 megapixel. So if you simply took a photo, save the photo like to your memory card or like your, your basically memory and you took it out to your computer, you will only see 10 megapixel photo. Now many people are like, wait, why, why then we have 48 megapixel now you can get that 48 megapixel output you have to just select it and at that point it will be limited to that primary camera and no zoom function would be allowed so you have to understand it's not that megapixel monster that the spec sheet makes it out however at this point in time as of now this camera is the most versatile because you can go ultra wide like so, uh, samsung then you can go normal basically your everyday and then you can zoom in now in that zoom in because you have like 5x optical zoom for that camera uh, it does not have 10x optical zoom please be aware of that it only has 5x optical zoom the another like you know below 5 it's switching cameras so it's still technically optical but it's not true optical so the true optical it only has 5x however that is on uh, like you know telephoto end so you get a very good quality zoom out of it and it has a lot of what we call optical image stabilization and electronic image stabilization so you're gonna get very good photo right out of the box so basically you took it out zoomed in you're gonna get very good photo this is a very versatile camera so will you be happy with this mobile phone if your primary job is like you know just to doing photography and like you know vlogging and all that yeah absolutely this is quite good uh, especially on the rear end not on the front front end one is like okay but uh, rear end one is kind of awesome so this is kind of the best versatile camera phone available in the market as of now now then the primary question becomes to everyone is it a dslr killer should i keep my dslr away in my you know briefcase or like you know my closet short answer no why not now you have to understand because it's doing so much computational photography on which you can check my video here is that you can never get clean data basically okay this is the sensor this is the file here's the raw file go do whatever you want to do you will never get that so that means even though let's say in some scenarios that 48 megapixel photo is so good you will not have access to it and because you because of that zoom and they are trying to give you a smooth zooming experience many times it will be like between taking the photo from a 20 megapixel uh, camera and then taking the photo from a 48 megapixel then mixing these two and then giving you a quote unquote optical zoom so it's really not that good so inherently it does not have a clean file to give to you even if they want to give it to you so that access makes sure that if you take a photo and it's good enough it's good enough for instagram your youtube and all that it's more than good enough but if you really want to like you know pixel peep and you want to like sit down and like uh, make a big print out of it yeah then it will start to break apart 
and on top of that you have to understand there is something known as s curve now s curve is simply basically once you start to increase your megapixel and i am talking very old days as in vga camera 1.1 megapixel 1.2 megapixel this was my first camera phone experience my like highest camera phone at that time i experienced was 3.2 megapixel sony uh, k8 and i so that starts to go up your image resolution your quality starts to go up but once you reach that 12 to 24 range you can't go any further you can't add like 100 megapixel sensor will it add more detail mathematically yes will the image look cleaner to you no it will look noisier uglier and simply because it will show way too much and there is no lens that is clean enough every lens is uh, like you know have a bit of translucency basically it loses a little bit of light once you need 100 megapixel photo like and i'm talking in mobile sensor full frame you know you have large area so lens defect is not an issue but when you have lens that is the size of a pinhole the lens has to be absolutely perfect and that is the another reason why you will see many people like using multiple megapixels so if they are using 48 megapixel for uh, let's say 20 millimeter that means that 20 millimeter lens is the highest quality possible now if they had a lens manufacturer that provided them hey we're gonna give you the most awesome quality uh, lens for let's say 18 millimeter they're gonna put 48 megapixel sensor on 18 millimeter because you have to understand sensor is the cheap part nowadays the expensive part is the lens that, and that is why uh, ask any one of your friend who has interchangeable lens camera like camera becomes nothing like camera is just paperweight now your lens becomes like your lens collection ends up becoming you know your main investment so understand this there is a reason why these lenses are so big and the camera has sensor so bad now if you try to shrink it down you can do it physics is not saying you can't shrink it down but you have to understand at some point that uh, 48 megapixel is just a joke you will not experience whoa 48 megapixel a 48 megapixel full frame versus a 48 megapixel uh, basically mobile sensor it's nowhere near good enough heck 24 megapixel full frame versus 48 megapixel 24 megapixel will win so do understand this, that 48 megapixel is reaching that s curve basically they can still increase the megapixel and they will soon release 50 megapixel but will it look like oh it's a 50 megapixel image no because of the s curve so many of you are old enough who will easily able to tell the difference between hey 1 megapixel and 12 megapixel 12 to 24 becomes okay 24 to anything higher is just okay it will look little bit better and uh, the reason why companies are still pushing it is that once they become uh, good enough in terms of lens manufacturing this 48 megapixel will allow artificial intelligence to do something interesting with it so that is why like if you are thinking i'm gonna buy that because that mobile phone is very expensive in indian rupees it's like around seventy thousand rupees so uh, should you buy a dslr or that mobile phone yeah buy a dslr because there is a reason the s curve has reached and the fact that you only get 10 megapixel direct like if you are uploading to instagram this is pretty good but anything other than that, then you will quickly realize it's really not that great compared to a dslr and if you are not doing pixel pp and if you are not uploading your photos to your computer and seeing them in a big 20 inch screen you are more than good enough so is it a dslr killer no then question becomes any camera is good enough or bad enough in terms of its competition right now we are in a scenario where we have too much chaos now in this mobile m50 like they will say 50x zoom that 50x zoom is not real it's physically zooming it once it cross uh, as in like once it reaches that maximum zoom that is 135 millimeter it will start to do digital zoom now it it is doing digital zoom from 8 megapixel however because it's uh, like 8 megapixel image is very clean i told you like you don't need to like you know have 48 megapixel 8 megapixel images are quite clean it can digitally zoom in very close so you will see images like this where it is better than basically at maximum zoom as in 50x zoom it is better than iphone s10 and all other things the reason for that is because it's zooming from 135 and samsung and all that their maximum is zooming from 50 millimeter so you will not get uh, like you know high quality images from iphone or samsung so if you want to that absolute zoom this is your deal that's it there is no competition here however because you don't get clear access to raw files some people like that some people like to want to go to lightroom because lightroom is not supported uh, pardon me lightroom is now supported by basically android and ios on a mobile version you can do a lot of uh, color tweaking and all that in those sort of scenario this camera will uh, limit you so if you really want like just image quality that's the your final goal i don't want a versatile camera i want the best of the best out there then nokia pure view camera would be the best one because it's using computational photography for different reasons this is also using computational photography but it's giving you that optical range zoom in and zoom out this is giving you the highest quality image out there and it does 
you know compete against the DSLR the image quality out of this actually on a pixel peeping level reaches that point because it has like freaking uh, four cameras and all of them are same millimeter so you can understand the image quality of this is undeniable but if you want versatile if you want to just pull out and zoom in this is your best friend so because of that digital mixing and it does not show you because if they show you it will be like uh, ultra wide wide telephoto and in telephoto you will get a little bit of 5x travel so they want to you know make make their camera usable more easily accessible so they are like 0 to 50x so till 10x you are in optical range quote and quote optical range once you go above 10 it becomes digital you can do that in your computer also so competition wise you have this option be mindful it's a normal wide you don't expect like having very very wide photo however because of the megapixel and clarity that you get out of this you can actually put this uh, somewhere between these two it won't be as good as p30 but it will be better than s10 and uh, iphone so we, right now we have too much chaos at this point in time we have way too much chaos so but it will be very interesting to see how things unfold so this was my presentation on Hawaii Meet um, pardon me, P30 Pro and I hope you liked it or learned from it. In that case, please leave a like. If you didn't like it, don't worry about it. You can press dislike. I would urge you to press it twice. Now you can also leave a comment because I reply to all of them. Press uh, play the ads that are shown in this video that will directly help me. Please subscribe. Press the bell icon if you're free and as always, thanks for watching.